Ah, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the live stream for the 9th of June, 2020. Tuesday, the 9th of June. Another, hopefully, <clears throat> another little hour or so. Um, a space for uh, a bit of calm and quiet in our day. So, um, if you're watching, wherever you're watching on Facebook or on um, YouTube, please um, pop a quick message in the comment. Let me know if you can see me okay. If you can hear me okay. Looks like it's all alright from my side at the moment. Um, sometimes takes it a little bit of time to get going, but it looks like looks like we're up and running. Good morning, Diane. Thanks for saying hi. I was a bit worried then that no one was there and that something was wrong. <laughs> a technical problem. Yay! Thank you, John. Thanks very much. Hi, Anne. Today I am painting. Today I will mostly be painting white roses. Uh, actually, just the one white rose. Hello, Mary Ann. Nice to see you. Uh, if you've never seen the fast show, that would totally not have meant, have made any sense to you at all. Thank you, Donna. That's great to hear. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So yeah, I'm painting the same white rose that I painted, I started last week. The rose amazingly is still there. Um, this is a Vanessa Bell, it's a David Austin rose. Good morning, Alison, nice to see you. And um, I'm surprised it's lasted that long. Obviously now it's completely different from the painting. So I can't really paint that now. But I do have a reference photo, so I'm in a, a nice position really where I've got a photo of the rose as it was when I was last painting it. And I've got the actual rose is still there enough for me to be able to judge the colours against because obviously that's the big problem with photos is the colour. Good morning, Daphne. <laughs> yeah. Today I will mostly be eating palette knives. I really won't. Um, Bondine has a question. Do you ever do egg tempera? No, and I'm in awe of people that do. I love the effect, the visual effect of egg, egg tempera. I've never tried it. I should really try it. Hello, Brenda. Nice to see you. Hi, Charlotte. You only receive notifications from YouTube. I've no idea why that is. No idea at all. You haven't unfriended me, have you? <laughs> Could be that. You never know. Listen, let's get started. Before I do anything else, actually, um, a couple of things I do want to do quickly. Uh, I'm going to be, this is a kind of an impulse decision. What can I say, I'm a painter. I don't always plan everything very well. But I'm, um, to try it, it's fun to do. Egg tempera, yeah, I bet it is actually. One of these days I must try it. I think it's, it, it tends to be um, used for very detailed pieces, is that right? Maybe that's just a kind of an impression that I've got. So before I do anything else, I'm going to quickly, let me quickly pop in the comments something, because tomorrow evening, evening for me, 6 p.m. UK time, this is the 10th of June, I'm doing a free online workshop on um, the colours of light and shadow. How to simplify form, pick a general colour for the light, a general colour for the shadow, how to mix the colours and then how to do a blocking with them, a start. Um, it's going to be a private workshop, but it's free. I'll pop the link in so you can register. It's basically the kind of stuff that I end up talking about a lot whilst I'm painting while I'm doing this stuff. Let me, um, this is the link if you want to go and register. Um, and then I will know. Good morning, Mariana, nice to see you. 
here's the link for the workshop, right? It's, it's going to be probably about an hour, an hour and a half. So pop over there and you can register. I've got to put it in, I think I've got to put it in all the various places that I, that I'm streaming at the moment, otherwise not everybody will see it. So, I, but I'm not sure, so apologies if you see this a few times. All you have to do is turn up. Don't have to pay anything. Um, and I'm going to supply a reference photo and a materials list. So you can paint along if you want to. Should be lots of fun. Um, <clears throat> I'll be sending out an email to my email list later on today with the link as well to register. The only reason I haven't done that yet is because painter and um, not being very together. <laughs> but I will do it. Uh, so if you're on my email list, you will get a, an email with the link anyway. Okay. I'll, I'll pop the link in, uh, in the comments again at the end, assuming I remember, of course. Is everything plugged in? I think, I, think we're, I think we're good to go. Let's get started. Let me flick over to the cameras. Here's the reference. Beautiful Vanessa Bell Rose. Now, this is slightly different than the one that I had up. On Thursday when I was painting this rose the photo because this photo was taken at the end of the session on Thursday where's the palette I can't see the palette can you see the palette I can't see it there's the palette you don't need to see me I'm not really good looking enough to be on the screen so let's bring up the painting so this is where we are with the painting You're very welcome, BJ. Seriously, any time. Um, mm, do I need to bring up the exposure a little bit of that camera, perhaps? I've got my usual problem. It's, it's one of those funny days today where sometimes it's a little bit overcast and sometimes not so much. So I can actually control these cameras from the laptop when I'm painting, which is amazingly brilliant and helpful. <coughs> So it's quite a bit advanced, more advanced this painting over what it was when you, perhaps if you were here on Thursday when you saw me painting it. Um, but what I'm going to do today is uh, I just want to I, I want to have another look at some of these areas around here where I just think it might it would benefit from a bit more form and tightening up a bit and maybe some edges and maybe a little bit in here too because I, I was working on this bit last. When I was working on it, it was yesterday I was painting this. And I think I might be able to bring some of this out a little bit more. But this is going to be interesting, hopefully, for you, as long as you don't mind it, watching a lot of colour mixing. Because one of the things that, that I found really interesting about this rose is the, sh is the shadow colours were... I reckon they were like... The colour in the shadows is somewhere between these two Munsell chips, okay, somewhere between these two. Now, one of these is, this is actually called 5Y in Munsell terms, it just means middle yellow, right? But it's quite, a, it's lowish chroma, it's a chroma 6, that. And this is 2.5Y, which is going a little bit more, you can see it's going a little bit more orange, right? And the colours in there are somewhere between them. And the interesting thing about flowers is that there's little areas where the chroma drops, where they go more towards grey. And you could try and get that by mixing a grain, sticking it in, but <clears throat> I did quite a bit of slow, careful work on this yesterday. And what I found was, by far the best way to get there was by mixing a lower chroma color of the same hue and the same value. So these two colors are the same hue and they're the same value. But one is a much lower chroma. This is this one is chroma two in Munsell terms. It's just a, a good way to control the paint, control it, you know, because our eyes aren't particularly good. Our, our visual systems aren't set up for doing this kind of judging. And um, so, for each of these these two colours, what I'm going to want is let me straighten up the palette a bit. It's going to be wonky. Thank you, Gina. Uh, thanks, Alison. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with the, the way this one has gone so far. I just want to, I just want to, I don't know, maybe, I just want to bring out the form a little bit more. I think I can just, I can give it a little bit more than I've given it. Um, so I'm going to mix like the low chroma version and the high chroma version, but not just in those values, across um, the next value up as well. That would be like two values up actually. Let me make sure I've got the right chips out here. I'm going to get into trouble before I start. So these are different values. These are the same. No, that's a chrome eight. That's probably a bit high. But I can drop and go between them. I'll probably end up at a, a, a four or a six. Um, and oh, there's odd little bits where I, I would want the chroma to be slightly higher. Now, I don't often, I'm not often this um, careful about colour, but the more I worked on this rose, the more I realised that if I was going to have, for me personally, if I was going to have any chance of capturing its, its delicacy and its beauty, I was going to have to be really careful with the colours. I was going to have to go what my, my ten-year-old boy calls full-on try-hard when he's playing his computer games and he's decided that he's really going to go for it. That's what he calls it, full-on try-hard. <clears throat> so this is like, this is two values up from that. That's not the same chrome actually, let's... I do try, I often try to have, um, is that really eight? Chroma eight, that's high. I don't know if I'll need it, that, I don't think, uh, maybe. And then as I go up the values, that's the, like in the deepest shadows has more chroma. So um, just to make this really clear, actually, you see, this is two values up, but it's between those two. This is like a chroma six. It's actually, if I was being really careful about it, this one would be back here. <clears throat> Don't know if that makes sense. So that's like chroma 2, chroma 4 isn't there, that's chroma 6 and that's chroma 8, but this is a different value. Actually, no, that's chroma. Yes, yeah, chroma 6. This one's chroma 8. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to need that one or not. Because what tends to happen is it goes up into the light, out of the shadow and into the light. is that the, um, the chroma drops, the highest chroma is in the shadows. So this is, that's um, chroma four. This must be chroma four, right? Yeah, I don't know what I'm, I'm confusing myself. To be honest with you, I'm a bit spaced out today. That's four, chroma four. That's chroma six. Where's the chroma? I want the chroma four one in that value as well. There it is. Let me move these over so you can see that they're a different hue. That's a lot of colours to mix, you know. But if I mix this one and this one, I don't need to mix that one because I can go between them, right? So let's take that one out. Chroma 4, Chroma 4. Chroma 8, right? Chroma 8. Do you want to see, shall I show you the pages that came from? Maybe not, because I've taken up too many of the chips, probably won't make much sense. But that's basically, in a nutshell, that's, that's what I've been doing. So these are value six, these ones here. And these are five. Now in a couple of places, I did actually drop the value right down to four. Whether I'm going to need those today, I'm not sure. We'll see. I'll show you the pages.
I've got a lot of them out already, but that's this is 2.5Y. Probably close to like a cad yellow. And this is 5Y is the next one along. You can see the difference, like one is more green and one is more orange. And the hues is like somewhere in between. So this one here, like at this value, there is no chroma 8. You, you can't really get it, chroma 8 at that value. This is what I call the chroma curve. As value drops, so does chroma. Remember, these are all the same hue. This one too, at value 4, you can't get chroma, eight, uh, chroma 10. You can get chroma 8. So I must have that chip out here somewhere. I might have lost it. Bad painter. Let's get going and see how we do. I need to mix some colors. So today, imagine that today you just rocked up to my studio and this is what I happen to be doing. Um, I think I don't really intend these sessions to be demos exactly. They're just kind of what I happen to be doing on the day. Sometimes I do go out of my way to try and be working on a, something that's interesting. But today is going to be color mixing. I'm just trying to add a little bit to these um, to the petals of this rose and see if I can do it without without losing what's already going on. So that's ivory black, that's raw umber. Now this is an Arillide yellow PY3. Um, it's Michael Harding Bright Yellow Lake. And the reason I've got that out is because I might want to do a bit more on the leaves as well. The leaves, by the way, this is light traveling through the leaves at really high chroma in places. Shocking. I can actually tell you how high it was if you happen to have a Munsell book with you. Right up there. Chroma 10. It's not outrageous, but it is quite high. Like light falling directly on the surface of the leaf wouldn't reach, wouldn't be as high chroma as that. It's higher chroma because it's traveling through the leaf. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. Hi, Blake. Nice to see you. <coughs> um, trying to remember all the colours that I ended up using yesterday and make sure I, I don't put out anything that I don't need. When I put, I know a lot of people use the same palette every time they paint. I, I don't do that. I, for me, I only put out what I'm going to use. I did use quite a bit of yellow oak yesterday when I was mixing. This is Michael Harding Green Gold. I haven't had this tube long and it's running out already. I have to get another one. I use this a lot now. I find it very useful. It hits a high chroma in a, an area of the value and hue range of paint that's difficult to get anywhere else. Quinacridone Gold Brown. Don't use too much of that because it's very expensive. What else would I need? Have a bit of lead white. This is Rublev Flemish white. I love this stuff. But it separates out in the tube, so this one I'm going to have to add some oil to, linseed oil to kind of reactivate the handling qualities of it. Thank you, Robin. Um, what else am I going to need? I might need some cad yellow, but I'm going to—I'm probably going to wait and see on that. Let's wait and see. It's 
So these ones over this side are the more greenish ones, so an easiest, easiest way to get to those quick. I'll mix the highest chroma one first. Start with um start with the green. This is very greenish yellow, so that I think this is going to be way too green. Bringing the value up. I didn't want to do that with white because I would lose too much chroma. It's not very, very high chroma, but it has got a bit, you know, that's about the right value, about the right chroma, but it's way too green. So if I mix on another similar color, same value and roughly the same chroma, but more orange, and I can mix between them. And if I'm lucky, I might end up be able to get both of these in one go pretty much. Probably going to need more of this one. Let's mix up some more of that. Full on try hard. This is me at my when I'm trying to be very careful. Sometimes I don't use the chips at all. It's I was uh, having a chat with one of my one to one students about this yesterday, and she was asking, "Do you do you ever paint without the chips, or do you or do you?" have to use them forever you know I've had that question a few times you know honestly I think it's up to you if if you I mean I I, I generally paint, have them and paint and use them sometimes I don't if I'm feeling very sure about where I am in the color space you know it, which I guess probably means something that I painted a few times before um, but generally I do Let's bring that up in value a bit. Might lose a bit too much chroma doing it with white, but we'll see. If I do, I'm going to have to jump this here and then bring it up with yellow instead. Mm, yeah. And actually, if I use this greenish yellow, this aralide, then it will put it towards green anyway, which is the direction I want it to go, so. So I'm trying to get the value I want, a more orange one and a more green one, and then I can mix between them. This probably seems really obsessive to you, right? This, this, but I need to know, because I've got a lot going on in this painting already. It's only a little painting, I know, but I don't want to start I want to make sure that I'm in exactly the same color space that I've been in so far. And this is one of the big advantages I find anyway of these chips. It's still a bit too dark. Is that, um, you know, if you're working on something over m multiple sessions, like when I was working on this yesterday, these are the colors I was using. And I can get back to them exactly. And there might be times when it doesn't matter so much, but. It strikes me, for the way I paint anyway, and for this particular rose, you know, flowers, I mean, to try and catch this delicacy, I've been struggling with flowers for a long time, you know, they're not easy to paint. So let's say I wanted to, they're so subtle, the changes are so subtle. Alison says, what's the difference between the Flemish and the titanium white? This, the Flemish white is a lead white. The main difference is handling qualities. Let me put some oil in that and you'll see what I mean. So um, titanium white is very opaque and it's, you could say it's a bluish white. Unfortunately, that was a bit of a bad idea because that's yesterday's oil and it's got a little bit of paint in it, but never mind. So titanium white is very opaque. It has a slightly bluish cast to it. Um, this is why people often say they don't like it because it makes colors chalky. So if you're in 
the red and yellow kind of what you could say the warm side of the hue range then um, if you lighten those colors with titanium white they will tend to lose quite a lot of chroma more quickly let's clean up my little oil tub <clears throat> so that's one difference between them whereas whereas lead white is is a bit more um, you could call it a warm white but it's more towards like a yellow orange in hue terms this is what i use cold pressed linseed oil this is robust and had this a long time it's a good quality should hopefully be of a similar quality that the paint maker used So that's one difference between them. Titanium is more opaque than lead white. Lead white is very slightly transparent. You have, so you have to use a lot more of it if you want to raise the value. But this is why I like lead white. Because it's kind of... Let me get a bit... I need a bit more oil in there to be able to really show you. The reason I'm adding oil is because, um, as I said before, this separates out in the tube, which is not a bad thing, it just is. It's just a thing that happens. And I've ended up with, because I wasn't very careful about how I looked after the tube, I've ended up with more paint than oil in my tube. Can you see that? See that hanging down? <clears throat> Titanium white doesn't do that. It's what we call ropey, ropey paint. So if you want to do a highlight on the edge of a petal, you can actually get that rope and place it carefully on the painting. That's how I did all of these little bits. And then you can get, um, what I usually do anyway, is get a small, this is a very soft brush, and then bring down the inside edge and then just you can kind of push it around to describe the shape that you want. Titanium white is not so easy to do that with. <laughs> That's so true, Anne. Anne says I'm starting to use the Monsoor chips and I find it gives me a fixed colour for my mixing. Otherwise I fantasise that I have the right colour when I'm actually way off. It's just because our visual systems aren't built for it, you know. Sorry, let me get back to talking of mixing. Let me get back to this. So, so I wanted this one. These are the same hue, uh, sorry, the same value and chroma, but different hue. So I'll pick up a bit, a bit of this. Swing it green a little bit. This should work all right. And the, I'm, I'm overshooting the chroma really for what I need in the painting, but um, I'm going to mix a low chroma version as well so I can go between them. Let's see if we're green enough, if we've pushed it far enough. It's close. I think it wants to be a bit more green. I think I might have lost a bit of chroma when I put the white in the... Um, and the yellow oak actually was probably a bad plan. Should have just stuck with yellow. So what I want really most of the time is, is something in between these two. That's pretty good. Thank you, Vida. That's very nice of you to say. Ropey highlights. Yeah, it's a thing. You, if you look at... Oh, dear, the light's gone. Uh, let me bring the exposure up a bit more on the camera. It's, if, you, if you look at um, a lot of... Um, a lot of flower painters do this. And I, I don't know for sure, but it's my... belief that... Um, in particular, from looking at his, the, the one painting that I've managed to see by him in the flesh that Fantin Latour used to do, use it a lot. 
you know, this, the, the texture, the handling qualities of, the, of lead white. So I want the more green one. But more green in this time. That's probably too much. Let's see what we've got. I think I've, I've, I've overshot the value on one of them. Actually, they're a bit, a bit light. And if I really was going full on try hard today, then I would um, begin again. That is too light. That is a bit too light. I should have taken more care to get the value bang on first. And try to fix it like this in a kind of a kludgy way. That's better. More green. I mean, it takes time um, to approach things this way. Uh, yesterday I mixed colour for maybe two hours or longer, I can't remember now, before I even got to the point where I put anything on the panel. But the thing was, when I did go to paint, um, it went a lot quicker because I, I wasn't hunting for the, wasn't hunting for the right colour, you know. So overall, my painting is, is slightly darker than the actual rose. Um, I mean, it's darker here because, you know, it's a, it's a digital photograph up against a, a digital photograph of a painting. It gets a bit difficult to, to bend your mind around it after a while. But. So the same thing here to mix the next ones down and get a bunch of green. This is the green gold. Bring it up to the value. The light's really falling now. I hope it comes back a little bit. Bring it up to the value I want. This is this Aralaj yellow, PY3. It's a very greenish yellow, so it's going to be way too green, you know. And you've got more of that. But it helps me uh, keep the chroma. It's in the general hue area, and it helps me keep the chroma. Gonna need more of that. I guess the other thing point that's probably worth making is um, you don't have to go through a lot of paint this way. <laughs> I've I have trained myself not to worry about how much paint I waste. I suppose it's not so bad if you if you you're pretty sure you're going to sell the painting and then it's a business cost, you know. But some of these paints are not cheap and you just have to try and forget about it when you're on the when you're on the panel, you know. So the value is good and the chrome is good. Obviously it's very green. So value-wise, let's check the yellow ochre against that chip. It's too light, so I need to bring it down. Um, and because it's also, I don't know, what's the best way to do this actually? I want to keep the chrome on. I'm going to use this. Uh, quinacridone gold brown. It's gonna, it's gonna keep it very much. That's very kind of red orange. It's gonna keep it very much on the orange side of things. But the chroma is high. The other one I was thinking about using is maybe the green gold. I still think that might work. It's going up right off the scale to orange now. Let's see what the value is like. I really hope the light picks up because. We're not quite dark enough yet, and it's gone very orange, so I'm going to bring it the rest of the way down with green gold. Swing it, it'll bring the value down and it'll swing it slightly back towards green again. That's actually quite close to the colour I want. It's, it's about the right value, I think it's the right value and chroma. So if I just get some of that, that's mostly there. Bring in a little bit of the green. Try a bit more. You can absolutely, if you if you really want to, you know, you, 
It's not a difficult method to use. Uh, it, it, you can absolutely nail the colour if you really want to. A bit more green. Sometimes I try to mix them like as really as close as I possibly can. And sometimes I think, well, that's close enough. I'm going for close today because I've already got a painting which I've has been, to be honest, it's been at the extremes of what I can manage in terms of value control and subtlety anyway up to this point. So if I start going in there with something that isn't mixed right, there's a really, really good chance I'm gonna mess it up. So this one, the green one, I might not actually have enough of this orange to swing it far enough. But I could still mix, you know, some of that in. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. A little bit green. How's the palette? The palette's looking a bit dark, isn't it? Let me bring the exposure up on the palette as well. So this is, if you're looking at this and you're thinking to yourself, my God, I could never do that, right? That obsessive mixing. Um, a couple of things to bear in mind is one that I, I've been doing this for a while, so it, I've kind of, um, I've got a tolerance for it. <laughs> I actually enjoy it, I love this stuff. And also, um, I think even if you decide that you don't, if you want to paint realistically, you know, I really think this is the best approach. But not everybody does. And um, I still think it's really worth doing because... Worth learning to nail colours, like, exactly. Because um, it increases your... This is a Terps, I use it to clean the, pa the palette. It increases your sensitivity, it, it stretches that muscle, it's like... Never forget, like when I, I first started trying to do some bar drawings, I couldn't believe how hard they were. They were exhausting and I wasn't getting anywhere near. Spending days over stuff. The, even the simple ones, the eyes, you know, and still not getting it and having to do it again. I used to trace them onto tracing paper with a felt tip pen and then put it over the original to see where I'd gone wrong. And, uh, but what happened is over time, I didn't get very far, I think I only got far as the fifth plate. But by that time, it's it's like the resolution of my eye had, had increased in some way. And also my ability to focus had increased. So let's bring, the, so now the low chroma ones, these will be easier. Gonna need a bit more yellow ochre, I think. And this is a bit like that. You know, if you if you learn to mix colour um, really exactly, that's always going to be a useful skill. It's like learning to draw with a really high level of accuracy. It does something to your brain uh, in a good way. <laughs> it's a, it's a healthy thing. Seriously, honest, I, I, it is. And. Um, That skill will, will, you know, as long as you, you stretch it every now and again, it will stay with you. So let's see what's going to happen here. This is... It's about the right value, but obviously the chroma is way too high. So I wonder what would happen if I took raw umber and brought that up to the same value. It will be lower chroma. Now, raw umber is like a yellow-orange, so I'm going to be too far on the yellow-orange side of things here. Because raw umber and yellow ochre, are in hued terms, are both yellow-oranges. The reason I'm doing this is because the chroma is, is too high on that yellow ochre mix. Oh. Way too dark still. Oh, I must apologise for the light today. It's really, um, really dropping. The screen's not dark, Elizabeth. It's the, the light is dropping quite a lot. 
I'm bringing it up as much as I can, but I don't want to bring the cameras up too far, or they kind of go, um, the, the quality of the image suffers a lot. I can try and bring them up a bit further than where they are, where they are now. It's one of those things, it started off really nice today, but now it's, it's just really overcast. Um, because I've, obviously I'm painting by natural light. It's an uh, occupational hazard. I do have an LED, you know, which I could, I could use instead. I have a couple of LED lights, but I still, uh, stubbornness, I suppose, I, I still prefer natural light. What did I just do? I just added too much white without thinking. So I ought to be able to drop the chroma of that quite a long way with this. And then I'm going to want to swing it towards um, green. Can you see that, how the chroma is coming down? The hue is probably, that's a good chroma. The hue is probably changing a little bit as well, but it's mostly the chroma. This is what I love about Monsel is the amount of control it gives you over the color. When you, I'm gonna drop it a bit more. When you really want to have fine control over a color, it works really well. And a lot of people say, oh, this matching business, it's all, it's, you know, that's not art and whatever. Um, but an interesting thing that I found lately, people talk about the Monsel system and it about being exact matching and stuff like this, and I don't think it needs to be. Um, I mean, obviously I am here and I'm matching these chips, but what I don't, I find I don't do so much is match the values exactly. I'm a bit, um, I want to set up what I call and think of as the value balance, a value balance that works well. So then I want, a, I'll keep a little bit of that back just in case. Then I want a, a greenish version. So let's just try bringing the green gold up to the right value with titanium white. It's probably gonna have quite a lot, too much chroma. Look at that, that's amazing, isn't it? I love this paint. But in this case, it's a way higher chroma than I want. I think the value is too high. Actually, it's about right. It's really difficult to, um, it's much too green, so I can use this to bring the chroma down, just as well I saved it. Sorry, I was halfway through a thought that I got distracted and didn't finish it, and now I've forgotten what it was. Mm, chroma a little bit higher still. Still a bit high. My friend in Belfast, art teacher, Julie Douglas, calls this, she had actually been using something very similar to this and she called it mixing value to value, which is a good way to describe it. So you, you reduce the amount of things that can go wrong with the mix by trying to control one area of the colour at a time. So I'm just trying to drop the chroma here. I don't mind if it, the reason I'm using raw umber is because I don't mind if the hue swings towards orange because I want it to anyway. And chroma is about right now. Let's wipe these off. And that's a bit too green. So this one is too, is too green for that colour. These are the same chroma. And this one is too orange. That is really close to that colour, so very slightly too orange. So for that one, I get some of that. I'm bringing a very small amount of green. If I used all the same pigments, I guess um, same tube paints, not quite because for these lower chroma ones, I brought raw umber in. That's pretty much bang on. Look 
for the green one, this is close, but it wants to go a little bit orange. Full on try hard. And the colours I want are actually between these in terms of hue. So you can see, like, I don't often mix with this level of detail, you know. It's But the more I worked on this yesterday, the more I found that I really... I was having trouble. And when I'm having trouble, I go full on try hard. And that's another reason it's really useful to, to have something like Munsell, you know, and, and to develop like a to develop your skill with mixing, if you can. Thank you, Yulet, you're very welcome. <laughs> yeah, Yulet, I'm always live on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and I start at 3 p.m. UK time. Is the screen a bit lighter now, by the way? I brought the cameras up a little bit. Hopefully it's a little bit lighter now. Oh, did I miss a question? Uh, Diane says, oh, what brand of lead white? It's called Flemish white. Yeah, it's Rublev. Rublev, George O'Hanlon, natural pigments. Rublev, yum yum. Um, that lead, all their lead whites are nice. Thank you, Joan. Nice to see you as well. Will different brands of PY3 be the same hue value and chroma? Unfortunately not. No. No. Um. <laughs> That's funny, Alison. Yeah, you're, you're, it, it's it's a it's a it's a, a tangible thing. The sensitivity of your eye to colour is a tangible thing, and you you the more you practice it, it's just like anything. Why would colour be any different? It's like anything else in life. If you want to get better at it, and you practice, you know, if you want that, one of the analogies I often use is. Uh, because I play a violin, not particularly well, um, is violin playing. You know, it can seem, I listen to my teacher play and the, the expression that she can get into a single note with her bow is incredible, incredible level of control, you know. Um, but I've been with her for about a year and gradually as I have my, my own, I can hear my, my own uh, the amount of expression I can bring in, it's, it's still at a basic level, very basic, but it's way better than it was a year ago, and it's just through practice, you know. And I can hear things I couldn't hear before. I guess that's the key, that's the point I'm really wanting to make. I can hear things that I couldn't hear before. Low chroma versions. We've got orange first. The value's about right, but the chroma is way too high, so let's just try bringing that down with raw and brown white. It's in a similar hue area. Bring it to the same value. So it needs to be lower chroma than the target one because this is higher chroma, obviously, so but the same value. Another thing I do, this is a really minor thing, but it's maybe worth bearing in mind, is I always wipe my palette knife before I pop it in the paint over here because I don't want the paint to be... Um... Oh, see, now the sun's coming out. I don't want the paint to be um, mixed up over here. The value's pretty good. So I'm looking at this one now. If I'm more orange than it, I don't mind. This is like the low chroma. So these colors I was using, like in the shadows, round edges, round here, 
and it looks like you look at it. Now, here's a really interesting thing, actually. I think people talk about this, perhaps the only thing, maybe there's other things, but one, one of the things about painting flowers, more chroma, is that um, is the subtleties are at a similar level to the subtleties of human flesh, I think. And if you look at, I was listening to, um, it was Sadie Valeri, you know all know Sadie, right? <clears throat> if you don't look her up. And um, she was talking about Bouguereau, Actually, that's bang on. Uh, yeah. She was talking about Bouguereau and um, the subtleties of his flesh tones uh, and the way they were going slightly cool as they went towards the shadow. And, uh, and I think those kind of effects, sometimes you can see people try to do it with hue. And that's how we generally think about warm and cool in terms of is it more blue or is it more orange? But if you look at these colours here, like this is warmer and that is cooler, you would agree, right? The difference between them is chroma. So drop and so changing from something can appear cooler, not because it's more blue, but because it's lower chroma. Does that make sense? <laughs> That's nice, Bondine. I hope your dinner comes out well. You see, now the light has come up, and I... It's one of those things, the way the cameras go, I've got to drop the, um, the saturation of the exposure a little bit now, because it's all coming out too saturated. It's a pain sometimes having to continually change the setup of the cameras, but it's much better, I think, than putting them on auto exposure. Actually, I'm not sure that you can put these cameras on auto exposure. Uh, let's bring it up with white. I know it's going to be too chromatic. Oh, too much. Oh, dear. Get out of the way. It's going to be too chromatic, but I can probably drop it with the raw umber, which will swing it back towards the orange at the same time, which is fine. As long as the value's in the right place, should be all right. Still too light. I threw in way, way, way too much white. Um, mixing definitely more paint than I'm going to need, except that tomorrow I've got another painting of a similar rose. It's another Vanessa Bell rose. So I know these colours are going to pretty much work. Too green, but let's drop the chroma and see. And um, so I can I can save these some of the, these colours that I mix today. I, I, if I, I've got enough here, I can save them and paint tomorrow on the other painting that I've got to work on which I'll probably still be on on Thursday, so you'll probably see that one then. Or it might be on a new one, we'll see what happens. Doesn't want to come down a long way. I've mixed way too much of this, considering the expense of that paint. Don't think about it, Paul. Let's not consider the expense. So that's too green. I don't want to bring this in because um, that will, will it raise the chroma? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to bring this in because it was it will um, drop the chroma at the same time as swinging the hue, but I can bring in some of this, which should swing it a bit. I've got a lot of it there, so it's, which means I'll end up with a bit less of this, but. And I may just settle for this colour being slightly too green because I can adjust it in the painting. It's a bit too high chroma still. Still too much chroma. 
this green gold, it's it's surprising. It's uh, it keeps a lot of chroma when it goes up the value range when you mix it with white. And if you mix it with yellow, especially with a green yellow, it, you get some powerful green yellows at high values. That's actually close. That's close. I just don't. I'm trying to. I'm clodging a bit because I want to save that. I'm going to run out of it if I'm not careful. This hue is very slightly too green, but chroma is good in everything else. And I generally, if I'm doing, if I'm mixing like this, I generally keep what I call the component colors back, just in case I want to make some little changes later. So that's it. I mean, that's a long color mixing session. It's a different way. I think people might be surprised sometimes when they see someone working this way doing pre mixing. Especially when you think like, you know, these colors are close together, aren't they, right? But they make a huge difference to the feeling of light in the painting, you know, to all of this. Um, some parts of the painting, I think, are slightly lower value, so I might want slightly lower value than that as well. And I will, once I've got these colors done, like I have now, then I'll quite often... Uh, Judy, I don't know if you're here, but my friend Judy, put a really funny comment in the, the Art of Calm group the other day about mixing really, really carefully because she's using one saw now and, and loves it, except that every now and again the little paint devil comes along and she starts fiddling. <laughs> and I do that as well sometimes. Hello, Karen. Uh, Curtis, you're very welcome. Um, Judy says, is there a place to find your video that shows the previous steps with this rose? There is, Judy. If you're in the um, Art of Calm group, you can go to the videos section there, and the most recent one will be last Thursday, when I started this painting. Or if you go to uh, my main profile on Facebook, and you look in, uh, click on the more link, and have a look at videos there, it will be there too. Karen says, how long does it take for you to do a painting like this in total using the Munsell matching? Well, this is like the third, this is a really simple painting, right? I just have one rose, but this is the third session on it. Yesterday I worked on it for maybe six hours. Um, the first day I worked on it for maybe two. I don't know how much more I'm gonna do on it today, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I need to mix the light colors now. So you thought I was done, sorry, not quite. This is chroma two, very low chroma. This is chroma one, almost neutral. And these are slightly different hues um, of the two. Th I mean, this is 10Y and I found that to be the best. I might mix the other one as well, but th these are, um, there's not much to these colors really. I think this is 10Y as well. You see 10, now, oh no, this is 7.5Y, so, this is gradually moved. See, these are going from more orange to more green. And then, so that's like 2.5 to 5, and this is 7.5 and 10. So this is going more green. So for this row is what I found is in the lights, it went more towards green and in the shadows, it went more towards an orange yellow. Now, you can call that warm and cool, except that, you know, the only problem I would have with that is what I was just talking about, these shadow areas, the cool parts are the same hue as what you would call the warm parts. The difference is the chroma. Oh, chucked in too much. Let's see where we are anyway. So this is 7.5Y, which in Munsell terms is like a greenish yellow. So I'd say it's a good match. So this is all my shadows. These are all for the shadows. This is the lights. And then I want a low chroma version. And as the chroma drops, it seemed to me that it went more, more green still. So. 
This is very low chroma, so I'm going to bring in a bit of black. There is a point to having black on the palette. And it's more green. This is going to be lower chroma than the yellow, so I'll bring in a little bit of that and we'll see what happens. It's basically, it's almost neutral, you know, with a very slight greenish. Because the chroma is so low, it's, it's really difficult to, to judge the hue. That's another place that Munsell chips really come in handy. That's actually a bit too green. Let's, um, I don't want to add chroma, that's the thing. So this is like a raw umber and white. It's going to be very low chroma, but slightly more towards orange. Tiny hue, I know these are tiny, 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 that's it. Now that these are tiny hue changes, you know, but they make a difference in some, if you're, for me anyway, in this painting of this rose, it makes a difference. You can see it, you can feel it, even if you can't really judge it with your eye, you can feel whether it's convincing color or not. So sometimes, I mean, it will happen. I did a, a rose painting the other day and I did almost the whole thing in one session. It wasn't white. I mean, this one is harder because the chroma is very low and because it's, it's, it's nearly, nearly white, this rose. So it's more difficult to judge. The, that one was a um, magenta kind of a pink. And, uh, and most of it was done in a day. High chroma it was compared to this. This it just seems like I, I just set out with this one. I really, really wanted to get to be happy with that. I'd got the subtleties of a, of a white rose. That was like the main thing that I had in mind with this painting, with this particular rose. And, um, and I do think that I've got closer to that than I ever have before. So, you know, I'm happy about that. I've got, um, it's interesting because the painting looks a lot higher chroma than the, the actual rose, but it's in real life, it's not so much. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I've got different cameras on them. Could be something to do with that. I'm not entirely sure why. And it also looks higher chroma than it is, it looks to me in the studio. Let's try. It's a bit ex of an experiment. I try dropping the saturation. I very rarely do this, but it seems like it might help. That was probably too much. So I'm adjusting the camera, the saturation on the camera from the laptop. That's, mm, I don't know, probably closer. And the, the photo looks lower chroma than the actual rose. Oh, by the way, you might notice that I've already signed this because I decided it was finished and then I changed my mind. I do that quite a lot. And it's kind of nice in a way because then you you work with the, the thing on there with the, um, with the signature on there. Like it's part of the composition, a bit like the painting in the frame, I suppose. So this here is Rublev as well and it's oleo gel. And I don't want to put any paint on this painting without putting something on there first to paint into. What I painted yesterday, pretty dry. And also I painted, I put a couch on it yesterday. Now ideally, I suppose really it would be better if I left this to dry another day or two. But I, I think it is only going to need a little bit. So I just want to see if I can put, so I've just added a bit of linseed oil to it to, to, um, to thin it down a little bit. 
you end up with a really, really nice finish. That's still fine, that's all still wet. Let's put a little bit here in the shadow area so I can work these two. You get a really, really nice finish when you work into a couch. It's like almost as if it's been varnished. It has a really nice, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. Yes, I did sneeze into my sleeve. Um, but yeah, it ends up with a really nice finish, which is another one of the reasons I like working into a couch. Couch being just a thin layer of oil. Um, and also you can, um, you can work the edges. It's just like painting wet into wet. Excuse me a second. Thank you, Jeannie. Yeah, I spent a lot of time, I might do a bit more on those leaves, but I spent a lot of time on those. What surprised me was how high the chroma was here to show that the light was coming through the leaves. You know, it's a lot higher chroma than I thought it was going to be. And I'm tempted even to push it a little bit further. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya. Uh, Nora, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, yeah, all the practice and stuff that goes in as well. It takes a lot of time. Yeah. Jeannie says, do you ever use greys, ivy and titanium or Flemish combination in lumps on your palette? Sometimes, but not much. What I tend to do is like, if I want to drop the chroma or something, I'll have a lower chroma version of it, like I've got here. Oh, the light's falling off a cliff again. Just when things were picking up and I was feeling good about the light. No, it happened. It's, it's a limitation of the cameras as well, because um, quite often what happens is that uh, I, I have enough light to paint here, but the, the, the I've got just about enough to be honest with you, but the um, the cameras can't really work with it well enough. This bit of my eye keeps coming to, which is really bothering me. I definitely want to. Um, I want that bit to be more subtle. So these are um, the Da Vinci, I think, these brushes. Yeah, synthetic flats. I found, like, I've always been a big fan of, of these. Um, Cornelison Hog bristles. Um, but for flowers, I've found a lot. For the petals, you know, I want... These just seem to give more control and you can get some really um, nice edges with them. So I've gone much more towards these now. Um, so for the very highest highlights, like normally if I was painting the vase as well, I'd reserve the lightest values for the highlight on the vase. It's nice that I don't have to do that with this painting. And there's a highlight like down here. I want to show where this is turning towards the light. All of this area should be lighter. It just feels like this bit isn't. There's something not working down here. Let me get into the slightly lower chroma. As it turns. Oh, to go into the shadow, there'll be a bit more. I 
It's interesting how, I mean, you can't like a lot of objects, solid objects, you, if they're all of one colour, one local colour, then you, um, it's too dark. There's not that much variation in the in the shadow colours, but it really is on the rose. Some of it is really, really low chroma, like these parts here, almost down to neutral. That's I think that's nicer. No other parts like um have more chroma in it. With something to do with the light. Now this here I've let become too light and it's not too much chroma and a bit too light. That's too light still. I want it to be slightly lower value there but very low chroma. Um, the reason is because I want this highlight to stand out more and, and if I and this here, and if I let this value come up to the same area, then it won't it won't feel as if this is turning away from the light enough, which it doesn't at the moment. So I've got I've got the photo up as well, you know. So the colours are coming from the actual rose, but obviously I've got for the form, like the the drawing, if you like, that I've lost uh, the roses changed too much, so I can't really now work from the actual roses to change too much. See what I'm finding a lot these days is. With these flowers, with these roses, it seems a lot to me that I just have to really up my game in terms of the, the, the subtlety of the changes to be able to show the form. And um, it, I feel a little bit like I did years ago when I was doing bar copies and I... I realised that I'm not, you know, I, I need to go up a level in, in terms of the... The resolution of my eye and my, and my focus wants to develop if I'm to catch this. And that's kind of what I wanted though, so this is like looks like it's turning towards the light more and then I want to bring this highlight in here. So this is where I bring out my, my lead white and this is with a bit of titan this titanium mix in it as well which gives it a little bit of chroma. And I don't have the drawing done well here like this. And then um, This is the Kalinsky sable. Soften this edge and take the ridge out. So I'll just get a ridge on this side. That's what I want. And then there's a little area of lower chroma just, just where it turns. That's slightly lower value, but not much in lower chroma, it just shows that turning there. Try to, try to get it. I mean, the subtlety of flowers is just... Sorry about that, I forgot to eat my lunch again today because I was busy. And what you can hear, if you're wondering, it's not interference from the mic, it's my tummy rumbling. 
demanding food. And it's even worse because I know I've got some fresh bread out in the kitchen that I made this morning. Soften. I'm just wanting this to be turning. Got a ridge there, don't I? It's dry, that ridge. I can't do anything about it. That's a shame. Just a bit lower value. Don't go too far. That's too far. Oh. I mean, this must be like excruciatingly boring to watch, like, watch these tiny changes happen. But this is what I wanted, you know, this is what, for this to, to show, I just wish I didn't have a ridge, a ridge there. Um, and then here again, it gets lighter. Here. Which then shows That this petal here is curving away from the light and gets a lower chroma there and a very slight value drop. Maybe lighter in here. Let's get a bit of this ropey paint up and um, put a little bit over here to make an edge. And this value is, that's, that's not subtle enough, that value there. Sorry, I'm into the painting now. I'm, I'm just hard to keep up with the comments. <clears throat> you see that this value here is standing out too much it's like a it's like an out of tune note in a piece of music um. And this transition here, I want to be more gradual, so I want... Have I got oil on there? Not much, a bit more oil. I'm really sorry about my tummy rumbling. I'm afraid we're just going to have to put up with it, including my tummy. We're going to have to put up with not being full for a bit. Because these are very tight. I suppose I don't often stream this bit, maybe partly because I think it's going to be really dull. Um, but you know, this is this is how it is. So what's this gonna give me here, this color? If I bring that, because I want a more general, uh, gentle, sorry, change from the light to the shadow here. A lighter, a, a lower chroma area, slightly lighter, and then it can come in. Um, so I can kind of mix between these, you know, for a lighter, a slightly lighter version. I uh, have to be careful. It's, it's a very subtle, um, it's a very subtle ch uh, change there. Uh, just. Directly underneath that is low chroma. Low chroma. 
a similar value, please be right. I dropped too far. So I'm picking up a bit of each of these, like the low chroma versions, and then I'm bringing it down even a little bit further with like a close to neutral over there. Sometimes I do things like this and then pull, go too far and have to pull it back. Just trying to get that kind of transition as it goes around there. It's not, I'm not, I'm not really happy. And one thing I found as well that I have to really watch out for is making the same sized marks all over the place and then you end up with this weird sort of almost regular, semi-regular pattern and it just doesn't, doesn't look right at all. I want to bring in just a little bit of... There's some edges where you can just about see just poking out into the light. No. Just want a, just a suggestion of a, of a little bit of light there. And it also it helps it to stand out a bit against that little darker. Um, I think this value is too dark, maybe. tricky because I don't want to lose definition. At one point I didn't have enough change in the values of it on the here and it actually wasn't working because there wasn't really a clear, didn't seem to be a clear separation of light and shadow there, that's too low. The thing is, I, I'm, I'm anxious, I suppose. I'm a bit anxious because I, uh, I like this painting at the moment. For me personally, I mean, I know there are much better flower painters than me, but for me personally, this is probably one of the better ones I've done, and uh, certainly of, of a rose. And I just don't want to keep painting. You know that thing when you keep painting, when you've lost your focus and you end up making it worse instead of better? Really, really don't want that to happen. It's just, and sometimes it's just that some little changes are enough. Ah, oh, now this is an interesting question. 
Um, oh, lots of comments I'm missing. I'm sorry. Let me catch up. Uh, Yulet says, are all shadows in this painting warms, please? I can't see very well because I'm using my cell phone. Uh, I try to avoid thinking about things in terms of warm and cool. I'm interested in the hue and the chroma. So I was describing earlier on how, trying to explain earlier on how, like this area seems cooler than this area, right? They're about the same value. The difference is not the hue. It's mostly the chroma. It's lower chroma here. You see the difference between this here and that, this? This looks cooler, but it's, it's not the hue. It's the chroma. This is neutral. It's the chroma. Um, so what I'm trying to do is mostly modulate the chroma here to get those differences, not the hue. And when, mostly when people think in terms of warm and cool, they think of warm is blue. Uh, sorry, warm is orange. And blue is is um, is cool. And but also, if you're in, I'm on in what you would probably call a warm area of the hue um, space here. I'm in the yellows, green yellows. And um, so, if I drop the chroma, then it appears cooler. But it's a difference in chroma, not hue. And that's one of the problems, the main problem, really. I think with thinking about things in terms of warm and cool. But yes. This, in the lights, it's more green-yellow, and in the, in the shadows, it's more orange-yellow. So just in terms of hue, yes, it is tending more warm. But I don't think it helps you to think about um, uh, colour too much in those terms. Uh, this is no more subtle. It's, it, in fact, it's the opposite of subtle. It's not what I wanted at all. I've gone too far. That's what I was worried about doing. Had the values come up too much? Right. That's the problem. I want that, uh, I just want a smooth transition there, that's the thing. And, uh... The light has come up a little bit, which is nice. Maybe I'll drop the exposure of the cameras a little now. mess with the exposure of the cameras, the um, saturation, uh, hue, uh, the saturation tends to change as well. I'm not sure I need to do much more. I'm just not sure. Yeah, when I change the exposure, it's interesting because I'm still learning about cameras. I don't know very much about them. And when I change the exposure on this, it's called gain on this. It's called gain on, on, on these cameras. And um, I think it's like the ISO. And it seems to change the saturation and the contrast as well at the same time. Um, I'm, I'm getting slowly happier with this, but I want to s soften it. I want to bring in a bit of higher chroma shadow in a couple of places in there. Uh, actually, I want, let's try something now because I want lower chroma. So I'll mix between these two. These are, this is the lower chroma version. See, the difference is not much between those, but if I put it down, it makes a difference on the painting. I think in here there's some lower chroma. Can you see that? How the how subtle that is, the, the change. You know, and you just get this feeling that there's something happening in the form in there. It's so subtle though, I mean how? Just how? High chroma version next to it, you see on the palette there, high chroma. And 
it's really easy as well to mistake chroma for value. More chroma. I think that wanted to be lower value though. I don't don't I really have. Getting down into my oil there, I need to be careful. Sorry, I'm talking to myself now. When I worry, I do this when I'm on my own sometimes, when I worry about what I'm doing, I start talking to myself, even when there's no one watching. How embarrassing is that? I just want to bring that value down just a touch there. I'll put that higher chrome a bit in. to be softening everything in there. I'm happy with that, I think. And these kind of, the bits where there's all of this texture here, I, I kind of like that. I want to leave it. I don't want to take all of that. I don't smooth it out too much. Uh, this is still too dark, I think. This value here feels like it's a bit too dark to me. But just a little bit. Just wish I was a better painter sometimes. Just feels so um, incompetent sometimes when you're, for me, you know, when, when faced with nature, you just. So this is the low chroma version and it re would be really tempting and it is really tempting and I have done it before to go mix a neutral and just bang in a neutral there and it just wouldn't work you know it's got to be like oh, that's too high value it's got to be a lower chroma no that was bad This is a bit clumsy here, smooth it out a bit. Um, this bit is bothering me now. See, it's because I changed this bit, that bit looks wrong to me now. It feels too, um, too the value is too low. Wouldn't be that low there. One thing that is bothering me is that I've got a bit of, somehow I've got a bit of paint from the shadow over there, so I'm gonna, I just wanna scrub that out. So I'm gonna use, I've got a particular brush I like using for this. 
not that one, it's a, it's a bright, short, stubby little bright. Where are you? Can't find it, this one will do. This is a, f a flat. first so I don't lose the finish I want this chroma to really show here and if, if there's a chroma's got into the background there it's not going to show this area here with the chroma I want that I want that change to show between the flower and the background that chroma there yeah I mean Lights come back, and I'm overexposed. Is it interesting to see things at this stage when I'm, I'm obsessively changing little things here and there? I always think this bit is a bit boring, you know, and people won't really want to see it, but. You know, maybe it's slightly dishonest not to show it because <laughs> then you don't see like all the obsessive little changes that I put in at the end. I want this to, neutral to go further around on here, I think. A bit more light into the background. And it does happen sometimes that, you know, even though I've got my signature in there already, that I'll have to end up painting over it and then put it in again. Sue says, Paul, do you sell do you sell all of them? No, I don't I don't sell the ones that I'm I'm, uh, I'm not happy with. No, this one I will sell. Sometimes I hold on to them for a while if I think that I've done something that I wanna think about for a while. Um, <clears throat> I don't sell them if they don't come out well. I've been talking about uh, for a while, like showing ones that I I don't think are good enough. Um, let me see if I can find one or two. Actually, these are these are relevant because they're flower paintings like this one. Um, let me check the monitor so I can check I've got the light right on it. Uh, not good enough. No, didn't put it up for auction. Um, this one, not good enough. Those, those kind of things, like, they're, they're not, you know, if there's something that I'm really uncomfortable about the painting, then I won't, I won't put it up for auction. It's probably really bad business to do that because you're never really satisfied with your own work, you know. You know what it's like, but, um, yeah, I don't know, I kind of have a, a cut-off point, I suppose, where I say, no, not that one, it's not going out. And, and yeah, and sometimes I just keep them because, sometimes I keep them because something unexpected happened and I, and I just want to 
hang on to it for a bit and think about it. This is awkward now. I'll show you another one I did a while back, like before Christmas. Don't think I'll be able to get the whole thing on, but I've kept this one uh, because it surprised me as much as anything else, and I, I kind of am still thinking about what to do about it. You know, I might work on it some more. I might I might put it up for sale eventually. I don't know. And that's an example of one that I just kind of want to have around for a bit while I think about it. I think I might be done with this one. I don't think I want to work on the leaves anymore. I was thinking about bringing some more chroma up, but I don't think I will now. I think I'm going to leave this one here. Um, oh, the light's coming right up again. Let's bring this camera back down to a reasonable level of exposure so you can see a bit clearer how it's working against the subject. So it's not like a, you know, it's not an exact match. This, I'm happy with this now, this transition here is working better and I was surprised by, you know, what went in there. It's not as low chroma as I thought it was gonna to be to get that effect looking right. Um, I think there's probably a bit more chroma in the painting than it looks like at the moment. I've been there. It's hard to judge. Um, yeah, Elizabeth, yeah, I'm the, what I was tempted about was to bring up the chroma in a couple of these areas to see if I could bring it even a, a little bit more light through. Um, but uh, I, don't, I don't think I will. I don't think I will do that. Now the sun has come out. Now we have sun. The light must be blown out on the palette. Let me bring that one down. Yeah, it's really blown out the palette. These are the, it's just the perils of working in um, natural light, the light's all over the place. But this, I suppose in some ways this is a fair, it, it's a fair kind of, it gives you a fair idea of when I'm trying to work really carefully with colour, it's basically because I'm doing something that I'm finding difficult, I go this, I go this far, you know, you can see that there's not, you know, I mean, people say it a lot, well, it just, as long as it's close, that's all right, you know, right? And these colours are all close to each other, but you can see, like, the difference when I'm putting them into the shadow areas. You can see the difference in the feeling. It's just, um, I, I'm not even sure that you can really judge it that carefully just, just by guesswork. I can't. Anyway, put it that way, I'm not good enough to do that. Um, and, and this gives me enough control that I can... I can just be really careful and these colours are going to be, um, I'm going to stick them in a little bit of um, cling film, little pockets of cling film like this. Make sure the kids don't see them in case they think they're sweeties. And, um, <clears throat> and then I've got my paints ready for tomorrow where I've got another rose, a slightly bigger painting of the same type. But I've pretty much got this one to where I, I wanted it to be I think. I think that was pretty much what I was looking for. Um, let me have a quick check of the comments. I think I've been a bit remiss for the last short while. No, something's bothering me still. It's just, it's just that. It's just not quite. I want that to be clearer. Watch me mess up the background now. I think what it is, is that is the value is too high there. The drawing's not great and the value is too high. I think that's what it is. I'm going to bring that value. I mean, from this edge here, it's like I put a bit of light in there and I put too much. And it's just not really... Um... Let's try bringing that down a little bit. Not subtle enough. That's better, I think. Oh, 
Although you don't like them, someone else might. Yeah, that's true, but I would feel unhappy about taking money for a painting that I didn't think had worked, you know? <laughs> uh, it's one of those, I don't know, it's one of those things, you know? There's, I mean, I, I do sell ones that I'm thinking, oh, I wish I'd spent a bit more time on that bit there or something like that, you know, because at the end of the day, you've still got to live. Um, but it's also like... Um, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure these, the exposure of the cameras is about right so you can see the painting as close as possible to how it actually looks. I'm trying anyway. Uh, yeah, uh, but but if I'm really unhappy with the painting, I just can't. I can't can't sell them. Catherine says, "By chroma, do you mean intensity?" Yeah, let me explain that. Yes, exactly that. Exactly that. It's like these are all the same hue. There's the value from dark to light, and that's the chroma from not very intense to very intense. Exactly that. And you can pretty much use those words interchangeably. Uh, Anne says, how do, you, how do you drop the chroma? It's not, it's not a dumb question at all, Anne very very long way from being a dumb question i dropped the chroma with a lower chroma color of uh, the same hopefully the same or very near hue the same value and lower chroma so i can drop the chroma of that with that i can drop the chroma of that with that do you see does that make sense i don't use neutrals for it Aren't you going to use all those eight shadow colours? I did use them all. I did use them all. I just didn't use very much of them. <laughs> I did use them all. <laughs> okay, I th I'm, I'm sorry if I've missed any questions from any of you. I think I've probably pretty much got them all. Um, you can always, if you're in the Art of Calm group or on, my, on the video, you can always pop a question in the comments. Oh, Judy, do you light your still lives or use natural light? Natural light. That's why the cameras are, uh, the exposure on the cameras is going up and down all the time. That's because I recently bought a small light on a gooseneck that I can switch from warm light to cool to balanced, and it made a huge change on some peonies I photographed recently. Right, yeah. Artificial lighting is, is um, it's just a minefield. The main thing to make sure of is that their high CRI, the color rendering index, is, is good, above 96, 96 or higher. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think it's come out all right. Thank you, everybody. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna leave this one now. Um, oh, Diane has a question. Background question: Is the board you use painted different colours but with a uniform value? Uh, and is the shadow we see in it literally cast by the rose subject, whatever it is? Is so. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, that shadow is as close as I can possibly get. On, on the setup, I've got a board behind the rose, and then I've got, it's like a two-sided box. Then I've got another board, which is kind of um, casting a shadow on the background. Does that make sense? Um, and I've tried to match the chroma of that shadow as much as I can. I, lately, I've started putting more chroma into those shadows, and I've tried to match the hue, but it's tricky. Um, so yes, that it is all. It is, it is different colours. And this bit here just kind of happened. It was a mis. I I generally don't believe in in happy accidents, but that was kind of an accident. I didn't mean it to go off slightly green there, but I like the fact that it did. So I left it with just a little bit of chroma there. I thought it was, I thought it was nice. Um, backgrounds are. I, I generally. For me, for backgrounds, I try to set them up. I try to set up the background in the subject where, uh, as I would want it, especially from a point of view of the value, if that makes sense. And then I just try and get as close to it as I can, rather than doing the painting and try and figure out the background colour as I go. 
I think a lot of people when they do still lives, obviously not you, Diane, but I mean people who are like at the beginning of their kind of journey of learning to paint, if you like, they set up the thing without thinking much about the setup and the background, start painting and then try and fix the background. I think you're better off doing it in the setup. Spend more time on the setup. I probably spend an hour or two on the setup trying to get that right that background right to show so the rose shows you know I knew I wanted like what I liked about this was lower chroma here but the same value you know and then it getting darker over here so this it stands out more that side stands out more against the light so and it took time and fiddling about you know to get that kind of set up like that does that make sense hopefully that makes sense um, and it's mostly, I mean, over here is mostly just a, it's, it's comes up in value slightly, but it's mostly just a drop in, in chroma, in chroma to, to neutral, you know. Okay, um, I hope I answered your question, but feel free to email me or, or shoot me a PM or something, Diane, if you want to talk about, about that more, if I didn't explain it well enough. Um, I'm off now, I've been on for two hours and I hadn't realised it, I'm very hungry. And I need a cup of coffee. And I think my painting is probably done. We're going to have to, we'll have to wait and see um, how I feel about it tomorrow. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, you're welcome, Diane. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth says, but how do you set that up with just using natural light? All right, I'm going to do something I rarely do. Just before I go, I'm going to switch to, uh, let me sort this out. I'm going to switch to the main camera take the palette off it's completely blown out now anyway and now I hate doing this but I'm going to show you um, let me sort this out it's just going to take a minute okay I'm going to switch to the main camera and I'm going to attempt to bring it in on the well that's really blown out now attempt to bring it in on the subject so you can see how I've got this set up so apologies for moving the camera around while we're live and hopefully I won't pull any leads out and completely lose it can you see that? Let me zoom in. It might not be that clear. I can probably move it fairly safely now because I'm not, I think I've finished. But look, here's the rose, okay? Here is stuck on with blue tack. Is a bit of board. If I take that away, that's not a very interesting background. Bring it back in. And you see how the shadow that it casts? makes this side stand out you know and I've got loads of these um, this is a board I painted I painted it to look like that it's just MDF and I've got a lighter version on the other side but they're really close so I could try it you know here's how that rose would look with a light background and then the shadow would really stand out right different or if I put this back again then I get a slightly different value and chroma in the shadow and I've got loads of these down there different colored background panels and boards and different ways of controlling the light so the light is coming in from a window big window just there I've got two windows and I've got the blind down on the one at the back so I have very strong directional light coming down here and it's on a still life stand actually it's on a speaker stand with a board on it. Why pay £100 for a still life stand when you can get a speaker stand for 16 quid? that's even better. That's my tip. Look up speaker stands. Just <laughs> hopefully that helped. I've really got to go and get something to eat now. Apologies for walking in front of the camera, but I've got to do it. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Oh, you can kind of see, actually, what's interesting is you can probably see a little bit closer the relationship between the painting and the actual the actual rose right can you see that exposure's gone down a bit can't mi match the lights because those petals are, are they're right at the top of the value scale and they're and they're pointing right towards the light like it, this is a value nine this chip right so that's my panel so if I hold that, that's, this is almost the lightest I can get. See, that matches my lights. If I hold that over the rose, it looks grey, right? If I angle it right towards the light, then fine, you know, then... But I would have to angle my panel right the way around, and then all of the shadow areas, I couldn't get that value. That would look lighter. 
Okay. There you go. A little bit of extra look into, into how I do it. Um, let me just check the messages quickly before I sign off. Yeah, I'll show all my background someday. Maybe one day I'll do a stream just on all the extra little bits and stuff that I've got. <laughs> you know, um, I suppose I've just kind of evolved this over time. 13 hours, then counting setup. Uh, yeah, yeah, 13 hours, maybe. I try not to think about it because then, you know, I'd probably, I'd probably stop painting for a living. Um, but yeah, it, it's the patience is um, it's a tangible thing. It's the, the focus, holding focus for long enough. It's a it's a definite skill that needs to be learned. Okay, I'm signing off now. Thanks very much, everybody. I really enjoyed that talking to you as I painted, and I hope you did too. And I'll see you again on Thursday. Um, oh, just before I go, don't forget, I've got the tomorrow. I've got um, tomorrow evening my time i'm doing a free workshop um, on um, light and shadow colors and simplifying of form it's at 6 p.m my time this is the link to register for it. it's free um, come along and i will paint for it's very focused gonna be very focused i will paint for probably um we'll see probably an hour or two um, and I'm going to supply you with a reference photo and the materials that I'm going to be using. So if you want to, you can paint along. So you register there and then I'll, I'll send you out an email with a link. Um, and uh, you can come along to this uh, free workshop tomorrow. Okay. That's it for today. Thanks very much, everyone. And um, 